Hello, I'm Iran. I'm a consulting sales engineer for Forcepoint. And today I would like to show you how we can integrate our security manager with ServiceNow. And REST API are the common way that application interface each other programmatically. So you can send uh, H H API requests as HTTP uh, post or gets and receive uh, responses in the format of JSON or XML files. And instead of users logging into the web interface and clicking the way uh, to perform uh, actions, we can do all this automatically and we can cut down on time and errors. The benefit of uh, is that it's more secure and quicker, but also that it takes the DLP out of its box and connect it uh, with third party tools when you can uh, extend the DLP solution and make it easier for it to grow at scale. And also it connects it to the security ecosystem so you can connect it to different solutions such as exporting incidents uh, with SIEM and then making remediation and changing these or changing these incidents values uh, with the source system. This integration between the ServiceNow and Forcepoint uses a connector, a Linux box. On the outbound, it will pull events from the FSM and send them to ServiceNow. We export the events from the Forcepoint Security Manager. We're using our REST API. And then we filter them. We can do it on severity to send only high severity incidents, but we can filter them on different policies, user groups, and other parameters as well. And then we forward them to the ServiceNow instance where they create new incidents in the incident table. On the inbound, we can receive change request to incidents and apply them on the FSM. So when an analyst makes a change to an incident, uh, escalation, close the incidents, do anything that relevant to the FSM, we can receive this change request, inspect it, and then forward it and re-authenticate if needed to the FSM. So we disconnect the FSM itself from the service now and we put some layer of security between them. So let's see a quick demo of how we do that. Here I have my security manager, and you can see the incidents that we that were reported so far. And in my env environment here, I have my connector, my Linux box, and my FSM, which I'm gonna export events from, and I'm going to use an endpoint to show you how this is, uh, how data flows. So let's look at this uh, uh, this Windows box, and it has the DLP endpoint. So any event would be reported back to the Forceman Security Manager. And I'm going to use, start with like a boring incident, to try to leak it here to a DLP test site. You see that the DLP endpoint just caught this. Uh, leak attempt. And I also try to do it with a super sensitive file as well, which is also get, be going to be caught. And these will be uh, seen on the force point security manager with different severities. So if I refresh my view, I can see two new incidents here. Uh, one is uh, one is the low severity which was the boring incident and a high severity one, which is the super sensitive stuff. And I can see all the information here. And if I go back to my uh, connector, I will see the process running uh, with some logs. And I can see that uh, because I'm using a, a non-verified HTTPS request, but I don't have a certificate on my FSM here. It's a, uh, then I will get this uh, error message here. Warning, actually. So the logs will try to push my events to service now. 
And let's go and see what happens on the service now side. So now I'm on my service now instance, and I can see what happens on self service incidents, uh, ser ser service desk incident. Sorry. So now I see uh, I have a new incident coming in here, and I have just one from this hour. So let's see this. I see that this is only the catch this, only the catch this incident which was the high severity. So the high severity one ended in 5771. This one, 5771. So let's look at this incident. So I, I have my incident created by the integration user, and I can see the details of this of this uh, incident, it's not very detailed. It's just a uh, version one of our integration. And I see all the details here. I can also take and maybe just decode them here with, with this decoder. And you can see I have all the information about uh, the task that would happen, the policy name, <clears throat> and all the, the information that I can formulate and send and use in my ServiceNow account. Now, when a user is uh, is changing the, this incident, I can uh, push these changes back to the FSM. So this was the outbound, and now in the inbound, uh, I, I can run uh, a business rule that runs after any changes. So if the incident changes stay to closed, okay, I can run some actions like displaying a message or even send back uh, a message to my connector that listens on port 7000 to update the incident uh, with this ID and partition and action value, which will be uh, closed. So going back to the incident, I'm going to go back and do that. So let's close the incident. State going to closed. And I need to put some information here. Let's copy this, say. Closed. And I'll need to build these work notes as well. And then update incidents. Okay, I need resolution code. Yeah, I know somewhere. I mean, resolution code. So Say it's a uh, result. Great, updated. So incident uh, was now resolved. Uh, and let's go back to the uh, to the FSM. Uh, but before that, let's look at the at the connector, my connector again. So here on my my Apache log, I can see that I have a, a post request with this incident number and values. Put, and this was taken, parsed by this connector, and pushed back to the FSM. So going back here, I'm going to click the re refresh. See, top incident is now closed. So this is the entire flow of the integration. If you have more questions, uh, please get back to me or one of the consulting SEs or your force mode SE. Thank you for watching and goodbye.